So we might not know where the electron is at any given time, but that doesn't stop us from trying to figure out, well, where it is, right? So uh, Schrodinger comes up with uh, uh, what we call a wave function, and, and when we square the wave functions, just a lot of fancy math, you actually get um, uh, an idea as to where that electron is in three-dimensional space in something called an orbital, which represents a 90% chance or probability that you're going to find an electron in a certain given amount of space. It's all about probability. When we study thermodynamics and you look at those clips later, <laughs> you're going to be able to see that everything's about probability. Okay, so the deal is, we need to, for instance, you know, if you, if you want to know where chem guy is right now, okay, well, he's in his house. All right, yeah, but uh, what's he doing in his house? Well, I don't know. Well, where is he in his house? Well, he's in front of the whiteboard, but we really don't know. So the point is this. If you're standing outside, you might not know where I am inside, but you know I'm in the house somewhere. Okay, so pretend I'm an electron. So I'm in the orbital. What am I doing? Eh, where am I going? What am I, eh, how fast am I going? Not sure, but here's what we know. We know the address of that house. And so let's say that quantum numbers are going to be properties that describe the orbital. It's just like given the electron an address, okay? And each individual electron in an atom gets its own set of four quantum numbers. And they can't have, the uh, electrons in the same atom cannot have the same set of quantum numbers. That's called the Pauli exclusion principle, which means that only every electron in an atom gets its own set of four numbers that describes its address. Okay, so what do we call those numbers? Well, quickly, we call the first one the principal quantum number, and that's just the energy level where the electron is. And so you know that principal quantum number n starts at, not zero, n equals one, and can go n equals two, three, four, five, six, dot, 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 and so on, in whole numbers going up from one. And that describes the energy level of the electron. Then there's a there's think abbreviated L, and that's called the angular momentum quantum number or the azimuthal quantum number. All that means is this: it well, it's kind of hard to describe, but it really what it is is it tells you something about um, the shape of the orbital. Now, that's going to be given a number, and that number starts at zero and then goes to one less than whatever you have as an n value. So, for instance, if you have n equals 1, your L starts at 0 but can only go to one less than 1, which is 0, and therefore the only allowable value at n equals 1 for L is L equals 0. Okay, now, what is this next number? Well, that is actually um, the magnetic number, and that magnetic number is going to be, here's its domain for its numbers. That magnetic number is going to be from the negative value of the outermost L to the positive value of the outermost L that you get. Okay, now what that means is this. Now, stay with me. Let's pretend that N equals not one now, now but two. So what does that mean that L can equal? L can equal 0 and 1, you can go up to 1 less than 2, which is 1 here, so 0 and 1. What can your ML equal? That ML can equal and be in a domain that starts at the negative value of this, negative 1, goes through 0, and then all the way up to positive 1. That's the domain of that ML. Now, now, here's another example, right? If I went n equals 3 here, this would be 0, 1, 2, and this would start negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and you'd have five numbers here that describes potentially that ML, that magnetic number. The last one is called the spin number, and that's kind of the easy one, because an electron can have a spin, and, and particles have spins. Well, that's what we say anyway. Uh, we're, we're, we think that that's what's going on anyway with this, with this particle and electron. And if you're going to have a maximum of two electrons in an orbital, which you can, one must be spinning this way, and the other one must be spinning the opposite way. You try this. One hand going this way and one going this way. You have to learn how to do that, but you can. And so the electrons can actually be with each other in the same orbital, even though they're both negatively charged, as long as they're spinning in opposite directions. Kind of like a little bit of a, 
uh, uh, opposite magnets there where you get a north and a south and they actually can stay together. Because electrical, uh, elect electrical particles that are moving create a magnetic field around them. Well, that's interesting. Hey, the spin numbers are just plus one half and negative one half. Now, I'm going to show you how to incorporate these numbers into describing where electrons are in various atoms.